This trip is a little bit unique in that we're gonna stick a little bit closer to home than we normally do. I actually get to travel to Northern Ontario uh, for this ride and spend some time in my own province, but a different area of the province that I don't normally go to. So we're gonna go to the town of Chapleau and um, check out what Northern Ontario has to offer in terms of trails, but also we're gonna hook up with uh, a hunting show from the US and they're gonna teach me how to hunt a little bit. Chapleau is located in the northeast area of the Algoma region, about three and a half hours northeast of Sault Ste. Marie. So if you know where Sault Ste. Marie is and the Sault Ste. Marie border, then you're only about three, three and a half hours away from where we're staying here at the Moosehorn Lodge. This area would be so typical of Northern Ontario. It's quite remote. Um, we're hours from kind of any other city here in Chapleau. And I have stayed at a lot of lodges, resorts, you know, cabins and things like that. I don't think I've ever stayed at a place that's this impressive in terms of just how it looks and feels to be in here. Part of this trip is meeting up with Matt Hughes, who is a former world champion UFC fighter, and he also has his own hunting show called Uncaged with Matt Hughes. And I'm not much of a hunter, but I've always kind of wanted to be. And being able to hook up with somebody who knows about hunting and has such a strong background in hunting of all types, I'm, I'm pumped to learn some stuff from Matt and see if I can maybe pick up some, some uh, skills that I didn't have before. I'm Matt Hughes, nine-time UFC world champion, former world champion, and now I've, I'm hosting Uncaged with Matt Hughes. I met Luke for the first time here on this trip, and uh, we got along real well. One of the things Matt and I have in common, and we both knew we had in common before we met, was that we're both, our shows are both sponsored by Arctic Cat. So uh, that was a, a common thread between our two sort of separate worlds that we live in. Uh, and, and we're gonna be riding a brand new Arctic Cat while we're here. We've got a brand new limited edition HDX. It's the Hunter Edition, and it's number 69 of 300. It's got multiple gun scabbards. Uh, one of them is, is a soft scabbard that's lined with I don't know, it's almost like fur, it's like felt inside, and then there's also a hard case gun scabbard as well. A tilting cargo box is super handy, and of course, for somebody like Matt who likes to hunt big game, it's got a winch, so he's gonna be able to get that big game home. We were on the HDX for the hunting, and it was actually really good for us. They had two gun cases in the back, plenty of bed space to store any of our gear, and I, you know, I'm, I'm really particular about my, my weapon, so, with that gun case, I felt very secure that branches weren't gonna hit it or anything, so um, worked out really well. One of Matt's reasons for coming up here for this trip was that he, he's gonna come back next year and hopefully hunt some big game. He wants to get a moose, but while he's here scouting, I mean, he's, he's a hunter and, and he's not gonna come up to Northern Ontario and not hunt something, so we uh, managed to, to find some partridge, um, grouse, some people call them, and, um, that's what we were going to be after while I was out there and while Matt was teaching me how to how to get out there and feed myself in the wild. It's a whole different deal getting ready to go out hunting. You need to be prepared and Matt showed me the stuff I needed to be prepared and, and what was necessary while we were out there. The trails up here are typical Northern Ontario trails. I mean, they're so expansive. The trail network here goes on forever. And you can literally start in the morning and ride different trails for the whole day. You could ride 10, 12 hours in a day if you wanted to and never hit the same trail twice. I like that the trails are relatively smooth. It's not like you're rock crawling and mud running all day long. The trails are um, fire roads, uh, forest access roads, things like that that have been abandoned or no longer used and are now used by ATVers and snowmobilers in the winter. There's endless trails up here in Ontario. Uh, just, uh, you can go on for days and days and days and never hit the same trail twice. Whether you're on a uh, ATV or, or a snowmobile, doesn't matter. They've got all kinds of paths through the timber up here. And then, you know, the views and everything else, you know, I like to see the, the, the rolling hills and, and see the terrain of the area. All in all, a great experience on my part. The HDX has, you know, a gauge package that's got all the information you're gonna need and certainly it will get you out and back every time without any issues. And I would say if you're gonna be adventuring, 
hunting, doing anything out in the wilderness, probably the most important thing your ATV can do is get you home. We were hunting birds off of the road, and that's something that maybe most people wouldn't do. They'd hunt them out of a field, but because there aren't any fields up here and the bush is so dense, this northern Ontario bush is really, really dense, the best way to hunt these birds is to ride along the trails, and you'll see one, they're always out on the trail just hanging out, and then we would slowly walk up to the bird and wait for it to take off, and then we'd shoot it. It was Luke's first time uh, hunting, you know, birds like this maybe, so um, I, <laughs> I wasn't going to rub it in his face or anything, but I was kind of keeping track of what birds I thought I hit and what birds, birds he, he would have hit. So the next bird we walk up, once again, we're walking to it. As soon as it flies up off the ground, we take aim and shoot. I think Luke misses the first shot. My shot finishes him off and, and he falls down. I really like guns. I'm a, I'm a firearms enthusiast as much as any Canadian can be. Uh, but the gun I was using wasn't, wasn't a gun that I've really used much at home. Uh, it was my grandfather's old Browning uh, auto double or double auto, depending on how you want to say it. I've known my grandfather's had that gun as long as I've been alive. It was the first gun I ever shot when I was just a little kid, and uh, I hadn't seen it for many years until I recently inherited it from him. And I was very pleased that I was able to take that gun, something that had been in my family for so many years, and actually use it for its intended purpose. So we got five birds. We're now gonna go head back to Moosehorn, uh, to the lodge, and clean them. And I'm gonna show Luke how to clean them. I want him, you know, these are birds that we've shot. So I want him to clean one at least, and know how to do that, and then we're gonna cook them up. Hunting with Matt was, just to put it plainly, a ton of fun. Matt and I actually have a lot in common. Our families are kind of similar. We have some girls, and he's got a, a teenage boy. And, and I feel like we formed some, a friendship here, and I hope it's one that in the future we'll be able to uh, call on again and get together and do something different. So we get five birds? Five birds, yep. Part of the deal with hunting is if you kill it, you gotta clean it. And that was the part for me that was kind of the most uh, intimidating because I've never cleaned anything before. I've never opened up an animal and pulled its guts out. So that was intimidating for me, but Matt wasn't gonna let me off the hook. And I shot one and a half birds, so I was gonna have to at least clean one. And I'm really glad I did, because it wasn't as gross as I thought it was gonna be. It was really easy. He showed me the techniques that you use and how to get the meat out the most efficient and clean way. Yes, you're just gonna yeah. take it, take that, and just pull it right down towards his chest. It, you see that, that skin just comes right off wow, the top? that was unbelievable. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> so no wonder they're so easy to kill. You got no skin. Okay, now what? So now just, just keep taking that skin and wrapping it around. And I, now, like right now, I would, I would probably, Grab this breast here, okay. and I'd probably take this and I'd pull it, pull it, pull it back. Okay. I felt like super manly when I was all done. I'd gone out and I'd shot this bird and I brought it home and I cleaned it. And, and Matt's a great teacher. I mean, I, I was never left feeling like, what do I do next? He always knew what to tell me to do. So it was an easy process, and uh, it's a story I'm gonna go home and tell my wife. She's gonna be grossed out, but she'll think I'm more manly. So that's what's important. Yeah, that last one. I didn't know what to expect in terms of flavor from these things, but they're every bit as good as chicken. And we hung out, you know, and, and sat around this great big table and all of us just chatting about our day and telling stories. And it was a really cool experience. I enjoy the fact that uh, you shoot something, the next day you eat it. It's just the way we're supposed to be. That's, that's the way it's, it's supposed to be. After our day of hunting, um, we had scheduled a helicopter ride out of Wawa, uh, which is about an hour and a half from Chapleau. And that was really kind of the purpose for why Matt was here. I mean, the helicopter ride was designed to get him up in the air so that he could scout areas to hunt uh, moose next time he came back. So we finally get on the, on the helicopter, he wheels it outside, and we, we take off. We didn't see a moose but we did see a lot of moose territory, a lot of moose terrain, habitat, uh, very good. Um, you know, I like to see the, the, the rolling hills and, and see the terrain of the area. The pilot, Blair, was actually a moose hunter himself, so he gave us some tips on where 
moose up here hang out, how they, how they, uh, how they live, so to speak. So um, all in all, a great flight. You know, for an hour we saw everything we needed to and actually heard from a, a hunter himself. So it was, a, it was a hour well spent. This experience has been almost from beginning to end a new one for me. The only part of this experience that I was familiar with was the actual driving of the HDX while we were hunting. Uh, everything else was new. Meeting Matt, he's a new friend. Um, hunting birds, it was a new experience for me, and I love new experiences. Doing new things, that's what this world is all about. That's what life is all about, is experiencing new stuff, learning new stuff. And uh, Matt was a great teacher, great guy to be able to teach me how to do this stuff, a great new friend to make. You know, all in all, I had a good time. I think Luke, I would think Luke would say the same thing. Uh, the productions were, were good together. Next time they give us a call and, and got something lined out, well, I think we'll definitely jump on a plane and, and meet them somewhere. This was just overall a really cool thing to put on my list of things done while being at Dirt Tracks, while working for Dirt Tracks and filming these shows. And uh, it's one I'm going to put on the top of the list, I think. It's going to go way up there. If you've enjoyed watching this Dirt Tracks TV segment, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll never miss another update.